there's uh there's different levels of stupidity i guess like you know the seven layers of hell um there's there's multiple levels of stupidity and i I traversed into several of them yesterday when I released a video. The, 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 the rankings are what I think. If anybody bought the number three, you, you did an awesome choice for 109 bucks. Totally, totally, totally. What I didn't consider was two things. Let me put these down for a second. That, that, these all are tying in right now. I did a video a long time ago. If you can go check it, it's called the FH5 called the FH5. It's an FH5 video and before anybody had brought it up I said taking the low frequency, the mid frequency, and the high frequency and using a universal impedance to impede all of the frequencies with a, the same material because low frequency travels through, um, high frequencies reflect off. It just didn't make a lot of sense and then I'm looking at the high-end stuff and thinking that they've got bores for the frequencies. I mean, stuff that costs in thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. It's ridiculous, but they pretty much have come to the conclusion that having those separated is probably, and not blocked by a uh, generic material, like because these frequencies react different when they're forced to go around something. That's just my simple brain thinking. And when I took the screen off of the FH5, uh, it did make a difference. And then if you go look at later reviews, people will say, you take the screen off, or they'll say, don't know if it'll make a difference, but it might be worth trying. Uh, I can say for sure that the FH7 benefits from taking the screen off. Would this be on my list? Yes, it would. Hence my first traverse into a uh, layer of stupidity. This was the first one. It's a big one, but it's not the biggest one. Mm, this is me confessing on video. So if you ordered this, you think, why didn't that make the list? Uh, it would have if I had done this simple thing. But now I'm advising you take that screen off. And this is fantastic. Mm. Whoops. Everybody that makes a list. Somebody said yesterday, do you like Critical? Um, I respect him because he puts himself out there and says, you know, this. And there's constantly people that are criticizing him directly or behind his back. Um, when you make a list, you're opening yourself up for criticism. It would People that don't make lists are staying in a kind of safety zone. And that makes them not have to do what I'm doing now, which is saying, you know, oops. This set right here, the P1s, I got and I liked them. But I graphed them and they came out super odd. And I didn't share that with anybody except the people that make this. And I said, if you sell this and if they, people start graphing it, you're going to die. You know, people put so much into graphs, whether you think it has value or not, if you release that. Also, this doesn't have those cables because they didn't think that out either. So those, if people are thinking you're going to short your... You know, that con those converters, 3.5 to, to 2.5, and th they're not in this pack. So this is why you criticize or uh, constructive criticism. Th th I wasn't saying anything wrong. People were coming in and saying, are those, that, is that going to short my amp, man? I said, are you guys sure that's not going to happen? And I get a box, and it doesn't have that anymore. So, And then I said, I graphed that other one out, and... Uh, as much as it sounds decent, and I'm not really picking up what that would be, it was at 1K and it was a massive dip, and I was up in my slider and I wasn't noticing that much of a difference, but just the visual of that would be enough to turn off a, a bunch of people. They wouldn't even give it a chance, even though I thought it sounded good. I get this yesterday, I post up my video of my favorite IEMs, and I decide I'm going to start listening to these. I didn't listen to this, let me go back, If sorry about that, this is training fashion. I don't buy training fashion. I use old clothes. So stuff you don't need to know, but I'm telling you anyway. Um, this is important because this is about music. Uh, is someone going to show me what I played recently? No? Okay. Couldn't stand the weather. Stevie Ray Vaughan. DSD. Didn't know it was a DSD until I was looking at it. it said ISO. Well, well, it's one bit. That's a fucking D DSD. Stevie Ray Vaughan is one of those things that I kind of... I don't listen to as much as I think I'd like to because i got to kind of give up on it because Stevie's a... Just an, if you don't know Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, he's probably one of the... Um, 
four greatest guitarists uh, in the history of rock and roll, in my opinion. I'm not ca counting people like Al DiMiola that are technically fantastic. Steve Ray Vaughan is basically a blues guitarist with Jimi Hendrix, who was also kind of a blues guitarist type of skill. He actually does a cover of Little Wing um, that's fantastic. The only difference is there's not a hi-hat strike like with Hendrix. Um, so he he paid homage to Jimmy and but didn't copy him completely, but everything else is spot on. It's an absolute so if you're a, if you've listened to Stevie Ray and you've thought to you know, it'd be nice to catch that whole thing because guitar is so fast. This is a planar driver. And the benefit of planar is that it's not uh it doesn't move in the same way as a typical driver does and it, it's not quite the same as a BA it's extremely fast it's so fast that mm, there's there's no missing of anything a, a guitar solo by Steve Ray Vaughan is a lot of stuff going on there's a decays of items that are overlapping other items where, where masking occurs with planar sets it tends to not suffer from masking. What happens with planar sets is you've got harmonic issues that come with vocals where you would have a very odd dip or uh, elevation right about at 1k and then off. What Tin Hi Fi did after I said and probably others said you, you this is you're so close um, and then I was sent a picture of a graph on the internet and said you know what do you think of that and I said I, you know, I got to hear it, but that doesn't look like it's going to freak people out. So, that that looks better. So, go, go ahead and send them. I get them. If you're, if you're a, a, a graph person, ignore that. That's, that's my, that's the, that's the thing popping out as I hit pause. Um, you've got a bass that, you got 30 hertz that goes to four kilohertz that rise from one to from one to two is about 3 DB and then it it's got that zone of six seven eight that some people find to be fatiguing that's 10 right there and it's it's chopped down which is something that a lot of the Look at the difference between some of these. These are, look, see that 8K, how high that is? But then preceding it, this is a kind of a Harman esque type of curve. Then you've got mm, stable little peaks. 8K is dropped right there. This would be the Anole. This is like a $2,000 set where it's got that swoop and then it comes back and it's got a very stable, you know, one and then it's got a slight dip at. Um, God, that would be probably about 5K. And then we've got this one where it's mm, right around 6. It's dropping. But this is a... This is why Stevie Ray sounds so good. And at the beginning of this video, you saw me lis listening to uh, Pink Floyd. And I'm, what I was listening to was a song, but I was listening to... Um, the gate announcement. So if you know Pink Floyd on the run, that's a DSD too. And uh, there's a gate announcement. She's talking about get your passports ready and it's a flight to Rome and gates and seats number from this and to that. And then there starts the panning of the rocket ships going from left to right. And usually on a regular set, but prior to those ships coming in or at that moment, you, the, the, her, she kind of really falls back and you can just kind of not catch her with this set a set of planar and because of that tuning I can hear this woman's voice some of you are thinking who gives a fuck about a woman's voice listen I'm telling you when everything else is just so hard to tell what's the difference you've got to find parts of songs that you know are difficult to reproduce and find ones that can reproduce that and then go from there and spread yourself out as these start panning from left to right, these sounds like mm, spaceships actually behind your head going left, right, right, left. She is clearly audible as that ship is coming into audio, which I think its first pan is coming from left to right and then another from right to left. She is, she is still there, clearly. M more than I've ever heard on any set. 
and that's attributed to the the accuracy of m minutia with a planar driver. So I'm listening to Stevie Ray Vaughan and picking up all, the whole thing. It sounds fantastic. That that whole area. It, it, let's consider this for a second. I'm t I'm trying really hard not to be hypey. I don't know why I'm trying not to hype, but I'm I'm trying not to. Um, I, the the unique melody ME ones were something I love, but I had to do a lot of EQ around one to four K. This the, the one to four K is literally that that is four K. That whole area that usually has harmonic issues with all of the IMs that I've tried that are planar is they I don't know how they did it. I'm I'm puzzled and impressed, and this is like the second level third, fourth, and fifth, crossing into the sixth of stupidity, that I didn't give these their listen before I put out my my list. Laziness, busy, it was a work day. I, I, there's no fucking excuse. Because now I'm thinking, would this be like the second favorite? I actually thought, would this be my number one? Can you hear that? The, the detail re retrieval on this is just mind-numbing. And it's not, at the, it's not being done because of that Harmon Hill where people say, oh, I'm too fatigued. You're, you're not, you see a hill over there? You see a little one and it's at like 5 to 5.5 and then it falls down and comes back up at about 10K to give you that spacey air sense. It's brilliant tuning by a company that seems to be probably one of the better in the whole industry. I, I, I said to them a, a while back, that cable from iBaso, that would be really nice on a set sometime in the future. Just, just putting it out there. People love their copper. That's a nice cable. You know, everybody in iBaso was like, it's a $100 cable, it's a $100 cable. And like, well, I don't know, I don't think so. But it's copper and it's nice and I liked it and I, I kept it. I think I kept it and I got rid of the Ibeso and, and, and auctioned it off to my Patreons. And uh, they put it on. I get a set and it's got a weird graph. Sounds decent. I, I, I compensate for the 1K massive spike, which I've seen before on planars. But I said, if people see this on a graph, you're going to turn them off. Can you fix that? And I don't know how they took that, except I got set, told that they worked on it and the, they took a picture of a graph and they sent it to me and they said what do you think about that and I said that's not gonna that's not gonna turn a, a bunch of people off immediately and then I thought that's hard to believe actually so I'll get, when I get it I'll graph it and then I graph it and I'm looking at uh, supremely stable across a major portion of the spectrum line that's that's ridiculous this is $169 and it's it's something that could possibly n take the number one position on my list. I'm, I'm pausing because my head's throbbing because I haven't eaten and I'm hungry and I get hypoglycemic and angry when I'm hungry. And, but I'm, I'm, the anger has turned into stupidity because I'm holding a set that is just so, so impressive with its detail. When I first listened to these, it sounded kind of too airy. And then I pushed it in my ears and it, it didn't like pop back out. It just was the way that I had to get it in. The stem, just in case you're wondering, is actually good. It's got length. You can get it into your ear quite good. So when I did push it back in, uh, it's got a lip on it. They did everything right. They, they made a decent length stem. They put a lip on it. There's no... loose connections on these whatsoever it comes with a copper cable um and it, this could be the number one on my list i love the s8f uh but i'm a music lover and the way that it's playing stevie ray vaughn and pink floyd is something that i haven't really experienced uh with most stuff besides maybe the ex1000 but the ex1000 yeah okay f forget that has a couple late spikes, but it's got a, it's got a very long, stable 
so I can I hear things in where I imagine they should be positioned. These are spectacular. If you have OCD like myself and you listen to things first and then you say, okay, okay, I'm okay. And then you relax and you get into the music. You're going to love these. I, yeah, one, two, three, four. I, I went all the way to the seventh layer of stupidity by not listening to these clearly. I, I was busy. I'm making excuses. I'm, I'm, there are none. Planar is an acquired taste. Or is it? I'm, I, have you ever seen a planar, a bunch of planars with me? No. There's always something wrong, and it's it the 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 Audis Odyssey needs correction cables. F fuck that. The Unique Melody ME1, I loved them, but I, I I had to absolutely EQ. I'm not EQing anything with this. The design is nice. How did they do this? How did they take uh, tech that Al, that Senfer did, that Tone King, the BL1? I've heard three or four versions that are were just whack. And they graft whack and, uh, you know, no, try again. And then these people, they did one attempt that sounded good, but there was that anomaly. S get it back. After saying that anomaly is going to kill you uh, or make you average. Like, there's not, you're not going to be special compared to, you don't want the cable to be what makes you different. This is like something that you look at, oh, this is awesome, this is awesome, this is awesome. And then, like, fourth or fifth in line is the fact that it's got a copper cable. The first is about the music. Steve Ray Vaughan. I don't know if I've ever heard Steve Ray Vaughan sound as accurate uh, on a set of IEMs ever. Uh, mind blown. My mind wasn't blown by the S8F. It was blown by the S6 Dewey because the S8F became... I thought that would be a better version of the S6 and it's in small bits it is. In, in in value it would be the my mind got blown by that because I I never heard of that company. This is a mi bigger mind blown because I've just not heard Planar done right in IEMs without some kind of assistant by a correction cable or by you having to say okay it's it's going to cost me some time with EQ but the detail retrieval is worth the effort. This is plug and play. And, and these would be one or two on my list. So people said, you know, why do you make lists? Because it, I keep track of my own evaluation and I just share it with people on video. So it's, it's, is it for you or for me? I think it's kind of for both of us. And then somebody said, do you like critical? And I said, he puts himself out there because with a list like I do, whereas people criticize you directly or behind your back, both, mostly behind, they do it to him. Companies don't like the clarity that graphs give because it, it and it's the reason that I said to, to Tin Hi-Fi or Tin Audio, I, I, I'm sorry that graphs are so important in this day and age, but with everybody in the measuring rigs, if you put something out there that's got a, a massive cavity at one, you are DOA. You are dead before you arrive. Um, and thankfully, they didn't just be like, yeah, fuck this dude. They took it back, and they fixed it. How? With that Y2K rig, did they do something? I don't know. I'll be talking about that more in the future. Um, I'm going to listen to these tonight, and there's a high possibility that the next month these will be my number one. And these are 150 bucks, and that blows my brains but uh, the music. And when I listened to these originally, I thought they were kind of bass light and the graph was kind of rolling off in the sub bass. But when I went back to Steve Ray Vaughan after I pushed him in, uh, the bassist on couldn't stand the weather. Mm. Let's go back and look at another DSD. Oh no, let's. Okay, there's a DSD of Steve Ray Vaughan. It sounded fantastic. Then I did the please do not go jun jun do 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 because bass might be a weak point of the planar. 
Nope. Nope. The vocals are not up in your face. They don't graph like that. The vocals are not odd because there's a weird peak. They don't graph like that. Eight, seven, and part of six is not elevated. The area where most people stimulate. It's not remotely stimulating in that way. I... Mm. Seventh. I crossed all seven layers of stupidity yesterday with that video. Um, but let me clarify, the, the number three TIs are, uh, the number three by TFZ are right where they belong. Those are awesome. Mm, 10 high five. Uh, I just stole 20 minutes of your life again. This is like not the kind of video that these people want. But trust me, they want, they want something like where you put all of the stuff laid out and you're like you get this tips and you get that and look at this case and like all of that stuff this is not the way it's supposed to go but i sat down and thought i'm gonna listen to these i wonder how they did and then it was like steve ray vaughn sounds like a boss and then i looked at it and thought is that really dst i didn't even know that was a dst the steve ray vaughn one like how much i pay attention and then i thought that sounds dope the bass sounds light push them in bass sounds fine how th th this his guitar sounds so great let me go check something that's got like a clarity check which is the on the run gate announcement by the woman at the airport talking about which rows can board and to get your passports ready and i, I believe the flight storm never heard her extended so far as far as when the ships start to pan left and right i can still c clearly catch her so the, first of all does plane iron make a difference it fucking does and people have known for years it's just so hard to get right it's never been done correctly as far as I'm concerned in chi-fi in the, in the affordable range. Even the unique melodies were required to have EQ. And these are $149. Duh, I'm stupid. But I admit it on camera. So I, I, it's like going to confession. Like I admit that I should have listened to these, and I also should have popped the screen off of these FH7. So if you got these, you're going to love them. They're great. Uh, pop that screen off. Do that. These are going to come out, I think, on Mastrop and also on Linsoul. I'd, I'd recommend just getting them fast as possible. I'd, I'd, I want people <coughs> that are concerned with accuracy. If people talk about classical music and they're like, oh, stuff sounds right. Man, go get these. Listen to your complex passages. And and here, you, you must know what planar is if you're into classical music because that is, at the end of the day, probably the best type of transducer for classical music, especially with a lot of stuff going on. Talking about an orchestra with 50-plus people playing instruments, several of the same instruments, you know, five or six people in the violin section, and, and many people in the You start putting that together and people will start to talk about uh, complexity, speed, and uh, a sense of stuff n overlapping each other. Here you go. Mm, Stevie Ray Vaughan and a fast guitar solo with a band behind him. Um, I, Double Trouble, I think that was their name. Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble, the group. I don't know if they were... Uh, I believe it. I believe... Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double... I'm, I'm, I'm drifting off message here. Um, these these might be number one next month. Graph don't lie. People do. Do, 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 do you like Steve Ray Vaughan? Can you hear that? I'm out.